Hello, everyone, and welcome. Now, today we're looking at photosynthesis, particularly the light-dependent reactions, simply called light reactions, because light is needed for these reactions to take place. Our highlights for today include photosystem 2, photosystem 1, and chemiosmosis. A nice way to start to look at these reactions is to look at the requirements and also the products of these reactions. The, the requirements include light, water, NADP+, and ADP. The products from these reactions include NADPH, ATP, and oxygen gas. And oxygen is a waste or byproduct. Now let's take a journey through the plant. And so first we're going to start at the leaf. And the leaf is called the photosynthetic organ of the plant. Into the leaf, we will find some specialized cells called the photosynthetic cells, which are otherwise called the mesophyll leaf cells. The mesophyll leaf cells include palisade, and spongy mesophyll cells. Now, going into the photosynthetic cells, what you will find are some specialized organelles called chloroplast. The chloroplast is the organelle responsible for photosynthesis. Inside the chloroplast, you will find a specialized structure what is called the thylakoid. The thylakoid is the region or the structure responsible for the light-dependent reactions. Now let's take a deeper look into a thylakoid. The thylakoid is surrounded by the stroma, and in the central part of the thylakoid is the lumen. The thylakoid has a membrane, which is a double layer. And the membrane is a specific region for the light-dependent reactions to take place. Now let's zoom into the membrane. The membrane is like any other membrane, which contains a double layer of phospholipid, and ends called a phospholipid bilayer. The phospholipids contains two parts, which is the head, which is the phosphate group, and the tails, which are fatty acids. Along the membrane, you'll find specialized proteins that are very important for the reactions to take place. I will refer to these proteins later. Now, importantly, we have what are called photosystem two, and is the first area or protein responsible for the first reaction in the light-dependent reactions. Photosystem 2 is also called protein 680, simply because this protein is responsible to absorb light up to a maximum of 680 nanometers in terms of wavelength. We also have a B6F protein complex. And we also have our photosystem 1, which is also called protein 700. And this protein can absorb wavelength up to 700 nanometers. And we also have our final protein, which is very important. It is called ATP synthase, responsible to produce or to synthesize ATP. Now, just to make a note, is that photosystem 1 was discovered first, hence the name photosystem 1. Photosystem 2 was discovered second. However, in terms of reactions, photosystem 2 will come before photosystem 1. As an overall process, is that light will be absorbed by photosystem 1 and 2. However, photosystem 2 is the first reaction. What will happen in photosystem 2 is that light will 
be absorbed by the pigments, causing electrons to be excited and kick out of the chlorophyll, and then will be transferred to photosystem one. After that has taken place, is that there will be a surge of hydrogen ions within the stroma. And because of this high concentration of hydrogen ions, hydrogen ions will pass into the lumen. As a result, hydrogen ions will be transported to the ATP synthase and stimulate the ATP synthase to produce ATP. And that's the overall process for the light-dependent reactions. Now let's dive into it a little bit further. But before I do that, what we're going to do is to identify the proteins involved. Again, we have our photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Photosystem 2, as we mentioned earlier, is also called protein 680 because of the absorption of maximum wavelength of 680 nanometers. We also have our PQ, which is the plastoquinone. We have our B6F, which is the cytochrome B6F complex. We also have our PC, which is the plastocyanin. And we also have our photosystem one. Again, it is protein 700 absorbed a maximum wavelength of 700 nanometers. We have our FD, which is called our ferredoxin. And our FNR, which is called our ferredoxin, NADP reductase. And it's called reductase because it will reduce our NADP plus into NADPH. And the last protein is our ATP synthase. All right, now let's now apply our reactions to these proteins. Now again, light will be absorbed by the photosystems to get the electrons excited. Photosystem reaction will take place first. And so what is happening in photosystem two is that electrons are kicked out of the chlorophyll because of the excitement of the electrons. Now what will happen next is that the electrons from photosystem two will be transported along the membrane in what we call an electron transport chain. The final destination will be FNR, but electron will be stopped at photosystem one so they can be re-energized because along the electron transport chain, they will lose energy. Now, however, since there's a loss of electrons from photosystem two, the electrons will be replaced from water. So when water molecules are split, electrons will be produced and replace those electrons that were lost from photosystem two. What is also produced from the splitting of water molecules are hydrogen ions along with oxygen gas, which is our waste or byproduct. Because there will be a surge of hydrogen ions within the lumen, hydrogen ions will be transported to the stroma and that will increase the concentration of hydrogen ions within the stroma. What will eventually happen is that the hydrogen ions will be taken back into the lumen through protein PQ and also protein complex B6F. Now what will happen next is that the electrons from photosystem one will be re-energized Let's go back again and show you. So it re-energize these electrons and they will be transported to the FNR. Now, while this is happening, the hydrogen ions will react with NADP plus through a reduction reaction producing NADPH. Again, this is a reduction reaction. Finally, what will happen here is that the hydrogen ions will be diffused through the ATP synthase and producing ATP from ADP when it reacts with a phosphate group. Now, what we're going to look at now is a summary of the overall process. Now, the first step to remember 
is that light energy is being absorbed by photosystem 2. The light energy is absorbed, you get ex, um, excitement of electrons, and the electrons, they will be sent to the photosystem 1. To replace those lost electrons, water molecules are split. Hydrogen ions that are produced, they are transported across the thylakoid. Then, light energy is being absorbed by photosystem 1. The light energy that is being absorbed by photosystem 1 will re-energize the electrons coming from photosystem 2. NADP plus will turn into NADPH by a reduction reaction. Hydrogen ions will diffuse through the ATP synthase, resulting in ADP turning to ATP. Now at this point, I want to thank you and tell you that I appreciate you watching this lesson. And I also want to remind you that all things work together for good. Have a wonderful and a blessed day. See you soon.